After declaring the variables day, month, and year, we will prompt the user for his or her birthday. Notice the specified format in which we want the date of birth. This will essentially be the key component in this video. This video is meant to show you the different ways in which you can receive input from the scanf function. We all know you can receive multiple inputs from a single scanf function, but you can also specify the format in which the input can be received. In this case, we want the user to include a slash after entering in the month and the day of their birthday. Making sure to specify that in our scanf function and with our prompt makes it more seamless and is in fact the proper way to implement this technique. If the user puts in a dash instead of a slash, the program will spit out undesirable results. This is because the specified format in the scanf function allows the program to correctly ignore the extra characters coming into the input stream and properly assign the values into its appropriate variables. In the case of a mistake and a dash is inputted instead of a slash, the program takes the integer value of the character and uses it in our calculation. After properly taking in the user input, we will then implement a way to calculate the date of birth. The way we will do this is to obviously check the month and the day with the current date to make sure everything is correct. I chose to hard code the current date into the program because the focus of the video is focusing on the formatting of the scanf function. It goes without saying that we expect the user to enter in the correct values of the day, month, and year whenever they use this program. For example, if a user enters in 99 for the month or even a year, our program will give undesirable results. The same will happen if they enter in a character instead of a number. This can be fixed with the form of input validation. So in order to validate that an integer has been entered, we will use the scanf functions to do that. The scanf function, believe it or not, returns a value, and the value it returns is how many successful values it has been able to pass into its appropriate variable. Remember that with the scanf function, we specify what kind of value we will be expecting and then pass that value into its appropriate variable. If this is done correctly, the scanf returns 1 for that particular passing, and it does that for every successful passing it completes. So in our case, if a user enters in a character instead of a number, in any of our variables, the scanf will return a value less than 3. We expect 3 because we have 3 integer variables we are working with, and any number other than 3 shows that something is wrong and we will print out an error. The next part of the input validation process is to validate when a user enters in a value greater than 12 for the month or a value greater than 31 for the day. Again, we expect them to enter in the correct value and this will be just a check to make sure that nothing outrageous is entered. We can make the program foolproof by validating if the day exists for that month and so on, but this will make this minor demonstration unnecessarily long. If you wish to foolproof the program, please go ahead. Nonetheless, validating the day and the month will be easy to do once they enter in the correct values for the input. Just compare them with an if statement. Once everything is correct, the age can then be calculated. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be sure to answer them in the comments down below. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if this video helped you in any way. Thank you.